This is John Coldo at DiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and compare and review the all-new Power XL self-cleaning juicer. I've been getting asked about this juicer a lot, and everybody asks, John, what do you think of the Power XL? Well, you know, my basic response is, number one, it's a high-speed juicer. And as you guys know that watch me, I am not a fan of high-speed juicers. For some reasons, they're actually very good, but on others, in my opinion, they're very bad. And if you are into your health like I am, I would not even consider it, except if you have this one exception that would apply to you that we'll be sharing with you guys in a minute. So this is the Power XL Juicer Box. You may have seen an infomercial on it. It's being advertised a lot online and infomercials and whatnot also being sold in many stores. There are different versions of it. I got the Power XL Self-Cleaning Juicer. And uh, this is a juicing made simple, they say, and it says a uh, self-cleaning feature, easy cleanup, no messy filters, you know, so we're going to investigate if it is really, truly 100% self-cleaning. Um, number two, it says 1.6 horsepower. You know, horsepower is not necessarily the specification that I want you to be concerned about. It all sounds good on paper, but we're not pulling, you know, carriages here. We are juicing vegetables, so I personally believe torque is actually more power than horsepower. This is also 1,200 watts, which is a lot of wattage. So it's going to use more energy. It says three variable speeds for juicing soft, medium, and hard fruits, which is good, and vegetables, um, which is good. But the other thing is, you know, different speeds make it more complex, and you got to figure out what pr what speed do I use for this item versus that item. you got to keep changing the speeds. makes it more complex. And then even furthermore, in the instruction manual and recipe book, I could not find where it told you what speed, you know, you need to use on what produce items and they don't tell you in the recipe book either. So it doesn't even say, like, use this speed for this recipe. So I think that's kind of lame. And then it says, an extra large feed chute accommodates whole fruits and vegetables. Well, we will find out more about that. So over on the side, it says, self-cleaning feature, Jack LaLanne family. So this is actually put out by Tri TriStar. They're uh, basically prim primarily infomercial marketing company. They actually uh, came out with the... Uh, Jack LaLanne juicer back in the day, and I will say that the original white version, the original version that Jack LaLanne put out was actually a very high quality unit. From there, in my opinion, the quality of those units degraded, so they were not the same as the original unit that Jack originally shown in his first video. Um, that being said, I am glad that TriStar is out there trying to make a name for juicing because it is quite unfortunate that in this day and age, people falsely believe that blending is better than juicing because you keep all the nutrients, whereas with juicing, you lose the fiber. Well, there are scientific proven studies that I've gone over in previous episodes that shows, you know, blending, while you will keep all the fiber, you are destroying more of the valuable phytonutrients, including antioxidants and polyphenols when you blend. And, you know, there's further damages done to the blended mixture because that blender is running at very high speed breaking up the cell walls and introducing oxygen, much like a tornado would tear up houses in Alabama or Tennessee, as happened recently. Uh, the blades and that vortex in the middle of the blender does lots of destruction, so that's why I prefer slow juicing, or also known as cold press juicing, you know, where you preserve more of these valuable phytonutrients. Of course, if you want to blend, then you want to get a vacuum blender, which I really don't have I have only good things to say about it pretty much, although removing the fiber may be beneficial in some cases because you can get and absorb more nutrition of certain nutrients in our bloodstream, such as beta carotene as shown by science, when it's in its juice format instead of in a blended format. So you gotta ask yourself, what are your overall goals? If your overall goals are healing, then that's when I would choose juicing. If you're more in a maintenance mode, and you just want to get it all, then I would do vacuum blending. Put a link down below to a video I made between vacuum blending and juicing. Anyways, on with this uh, review here. It's a uh, 1200 watts up to 25,000 RPM. That's really fast. And it says extra large feature. We'll talk about that in a minute. Stainless steel blades, removable non-drip spout, dishwasher safe parts. Rapid nutrition and fresh juice in seconds. And that I will definitely agree with. But the thing is, why does a self-cleaning juicer come with a cleaning brush if it is fully self-cleaning? Well, that's because in the instruction manual, it doesn't say it is always self-cleaning. Sometimes you may have to clean it. 
So that's the caveat. I mean, there's other juicers that are sold as self-cleaning. They're not 100% automatically self-cleaning. I wish there was robot hands that came out and washed it and scrubbed it for you. You know, nothing will ever clean a juicer as well as a cleaning brush would. So personally, I think this is mostly gimmick, but we will see at the end of this video. All right. So anyways, this is the juicer here. This is known as a high speed juicer. You might think it looks similar to a Breville juicer, which is actually has a similar kind of latching function with this little latch arm. Actually, the original Jack Lane also had this style uh, latch arm, I believe. And the other thing is this is a high speed machine. So this is like the, the simplest and most cheapest cost effective juicer to produce because it's basically a motor with a blade assembly and lots of lots of plastic. They run at high speed and the main benefit to this style machine over all others is that it is fast. So what I'm gonna say is this, if you're not gonna juice because it takes too long, right? Um, you know, doing it in a slow method and creating more nutrition for you and your body so that you get more benefits and you're not gonna do it, then I would definitely say that a high speed juicer, you know, is better than no juice at all. That being said, a slow juice is even better than a high speed juice. So if you, you could eke out even just a little bit of time in your schedule more, five, 10 minutes more to get a slow juicer and do it properly, in my opinion, your body will thank you with a massive increase in phytonutrients, which, you know, are, in my opinion, are the reason, and also based on science, are the reasons for the benefits we get from consuming these fruit and vegetable juices that concentrates plants, the plant's nutrition or phytonutrients that are contained within. So the basic operation of this machine is that there's this latch, you can take off this cover, 100% all plastic. They do claim that it actually has an extra wide feature. Well, let's find this out right now. I have a tape measure and the interesting thing about this machine, it actually has a flap. Most juicers don't have a flap to cover the top. I guess that's good for dust, but also maybe important when you're feeding water through there because you may get some splashing. Um, and we're going to go ahead and measure this feed chute. This feed chute measures about um, 2.58, 2 inches and 5 eighths, 2 and 5 eighths inches. So that's a little bit over 2 and a half inches on how big this feed chute is. I, don't, I would not call this extra wide because on the Breville juicer, it's a 3 inch wide feed chute. On the Kuvings EVO 820, it actually has a 3.2 inch wide feed chute. So this is actually a tiny feed chute. It's not going to even fit whole apples in like other juicers. I mean, it, it, it's deceiving because this is so large, but the hole is small. And in the bottom, they basically, you know, have this little step thing, which is kind of unique and innovative, which may be beneficial uh, during the juicing process. Now, the other thing, you know, there are some innovations in this machine that I, I respect and see, and I appreciate a lot. Number one are the fins in the back. For a lot of you guys, this may not mean anything, but the other thing to remember is that when this juicer's on, it's pushing a lot of air through there and the air will go into the collection bin and normally not have a way to escape. What will happen is all the air will seep out the little cracks and seams of the um, you know, collection bin. Sometimes pulp will fly, and so these juicers can be very messy. This has solved that issue by having a fins at the back so that some of the air comes out the back of the unit, which is impressive to me. So I, like, I do like that a lot. Oh, and then here's the uh, self-cleaning brush. So what happens is you press this little lever, I don't know if you guys could see that, but there's a little lever here that has a silicone blade on it that I believe they give you a few extras. That when you're done juicing, you can fill this up with water, pour water through this, and pull this blade up and down. And it acts like you're basically pushing the brush on it, but there's no brush tips, it's just solid. So it's going to like more scrape, like your windshield wiper scrapes. Your windshield wiper can't scrub, you know, bird poop that's ground in on your windshield off it'll just scrape off the water so that's what basically this will scrape off the screen when you're done but if you have any ground in pulp into the screen this is not going to clean that sufficiently so despite being quote unquote self-cleaning i personally still would take a brush to it especially on the back of the screen because if you just use a self-cleaning function over time what you will find in my personal opinion is that you will get build up on your screen the holes will get clogged and that will basically lower the yield over time for you guys all right so uh, next part we got to pull these two pieces out that's kind of stuck next part we have the juicing screen and I will say this is a pretty solid juicing screen you know it has a nice sharp teeth on here this is much like a grater like you would grate your carrots up and then it has like a little razor blade thing in the center which uh, got started by Breville and um, this does have screws so it is user, user replaceable if it should get dull but that being said they probably won't say just the blade they'll say the whole assembly 
Um, the holes on the screen look pretty cool. They're like micro mesh, so they're actually a different uh, shape. They're normally like round, but this is kind of an oblong shape, and I do like it. This looks to be like a high quality screen, which I really like a lot. Hopefully this is well balanced. Uh, the next part coming out is the plastic housing. So basically, as this is running around, what happens is the produce goes in here, it gets micro shred up. As the produce is micro shred up, juice is released. The juice then is flung out through centrifugal force. This does not create heat, as many people will tell you. High speed juicers create heat. And oh my gosh, when I hear that, I'm like, people are just, you know, repeating the rhetoric. In my testing, link down below, I have not seen that high speed juicers heat the juice. I don't know where that came from. You know, matter of fact, uh, you know, a masticating juicer, since it's a champion juicer, can heat the juice, although a slow juicer, which I would not consider masticating like an auger juicer, you know, um, will, will also heat the juice, but not that much. Every juicer will heat the juice to some extent, some more than others, but I do not think it gets to the point where it's damaging nutrition. The thing that damages nutrition the most, in my personal opinion, is the oxygen that's being forced into the juice as the juicer is running. You know, and this one runs at exceptionally high speed, 25,000 RPMs, which is one of the fastest juicers on the entire planet, all right? So basically what happens is the produce is uh, is, is uh, ground up and the juice then goes through these holes which then goes into this clear um, bowl which then gets basically pushed out through the air pressure into the spout and then all the pulp basically gets kicked out the back into the collection bin hopper at the in the back of the machine. Uh, you have a standard basically motor here. Um, and this is actually fairly heavy for its size, so I like that. It's an ETL listed, uh, 1,200 watts, made in China, up to 25,000 RPMs. And uh, let's see here. And then on the side here, you have uh, different uh, speeds. You have off, which is zero. Then you have the clean function. So if you're cleaning it, I suppose it runs at a slower speed, so you don't like really mess up anything. Then you have a speed one, two, and three. So it's like for softer uh, fruits you know, medium firmness of fruits and vegetables, and then if you're juicing like carrots and roots and beets, then you want to do uh, number three. So I wish they made it more clear as to which fruit or vegetable that should have like little pictures by this little thing, because I never know what speed to, you know, run the juicer at. And if you don't run at the right speed, you may sacrifice some yield. That being said, you know, for softer produce items, um, you know, this juicer is not the most effective at getting the most yield. It will end up wasting a lot. But for things like carrots and beets, it actually does a fairly good job at getting a very high yield. Although, in my opinion, it's not the most high nutrition. All right. And then the other thing on this unit, there's a little cap on the spout, which actually comes off. It has a little two double O-ring system. So you could turn this when you're done so you can prevent dripping on your counter, which I think is a nice feature, although this is a bit difficult to turn. All right, so assembly on this unit is not that difficult. We're gonna go ahead and put this down on there. Put the juicing screen in. Rotate that down. And then we're gonna put this uh, top assembly on. It all locks into place very simply, very easily. And crank that back in. And then very important, uh, you gotta make sure this uh, collection bin is in properly. It kinda goes in at an angle, angles up. And then basically locks into place. If it's not locked into place, then if it's a little bit ajar, pulp is going to be flying <laughs> when you're juicing in it, all right? So while many videos online may say, oh, the Power XL is the best, but then the, the video does not, they don't compare it to anything. So the only way we're going to know if this juicer is best or not is if we compare it to another style juicer, you know, that's in a similar price category to see, compare this juicer to that juicer because every different kind of juicer works a bit differently. So I want to see how this juicer compares to my favorite juicer, it's actually the, my travel juicer that goes in my suitcase when I fly off to Hawaii. And yes, it is TSA compliant. And I've juiced in my hotel in Hawaii. And I made ginger turmeric juice amongst others. So now I want to compare the Power XL juicer to the Shine juicer, which is actually my personal travel juicer. This goes in my luggage when I'm flying to Hawaii or you know taking a trip on an airplane. This is a TSA compliant. They won't want to open your bag up and see what it is because most people don't travel with their juicer but this is the juicer i use when i'm on the road traveling you know this is not the one of the high-end juicers that we sell but this is in a price category similar to the power xl juicer and i want to sh share with you guys the benefits pros and cons of each version each of these juicers with you guys all right so first off this is called a slow juicer also known as a cold press juicer where this is actually a high speed 
um, you know, centrifugal ejection style juicer. So if you want a cold press juice, you know, this is the style juicer that will literally crush and squeeze and press out the juice out of the produce literally at 40 RPMs. That's 40 revolutions per minute. That's really slow, right? Whereas this one runs at up to 25,000 RPMs, which is really fast. So I'll say once again, the main benefit of this machine is that it is fast. You will not find a juicer that's faster than a high speed ejection juicer than this machine if you will not take the time to juice. You know, I'd rather you guys, instead of popping open a soda and drinking it, which takes a few seconds, I'd rather you oh, turn on this machine and juice a few things in a few seconds and drink that. But, you know, that being said, the better way to do it is to get a slow juicer, whatever juicer that may be. This is our entry level model that we sell at Discount Juicers. Now, some of the other comparisons that are important for me is that, you know, juicing to me is not just a fad. I'm not going to do it for 30 days or 60 days or go on a juice cleanse for a little bit of time and then go off it. Juicing is my lifestyle. I drink up to 70 ounces of juice and sometimes even more a day. And I want you guys to, you know, get that habit also to drink fresh juice every day because it is the best way you can increase your especially leafy green and uh, vegetable and fruit consumption because simply most Americans, I, I saw a statistic the other day, 83% of Americans don't eat enough of their fruit and vegetable servings. And by juicing your fruits and vegetables, you could really ramp up your servings. So literally, you could potentially, like I do, get all your servings of fruits and vegetables by just drinking them in juice because you don't like to eat them. You don't like to crunch up broccoli. You don't like to eat kale. But if you juice it with some pineapple and some apples, man, you're going to ramp up significantly your amount of beneficial phytochemicals in the fruits and vegetables and why not do that in the best way possible that preserves the most nutrition they did a study and I'm not getting into study but they basically they did a study with a slow juicer versus a high speed juicer and the laboratory animals which I'm not a, in, in, in agreement with the laboratory animal testing got the benefits when they had the juice from the slow juicer but not the juice from the high speed juicer because it's these polyphenol compounds and uh, other compounds in the fruits and vegetables that are better extracted in a slow method than this high speed method in my personal opinion and based on some of the science. Now the other things you're gonna get is that you're gonna get a, a more durable juicer. This machine has a full three year warranty warranty by Trivest, whereas the Power XL only has a one year warranty. So that means if this one fails in you know a year and two months, you gotta buy a new one. If this one fails in a year and two months, you call Trivest up and they'll basically repair or replace the juicer uh, you know, maybe you might have to pay a small shipping charge for some parts if the parts broke. And then you'll still be juicing. So this is more of a long-term game plan. And of course, if you guys are just looking into getting a juicer, you know, I would actually recommend, and you're serious about your health and want to juice on the lifestyle for the rest of your life because you know the differences it can make. You've heard about your friends that have lost weight. You saw the movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead where Joe Cross, you know, lost a bunch of weight. Unfortunately, he's not being able to keep that off because he hasn't been ke keeping up with the juicing lifestyle. Um... You know, then you should get a, a better machine, which I have plenty of videos on. This channel has over 500, 600 videos on comparing different juicers and other appliances that allow you to get more fresh fruits and vegetables in you. I mean, they are the mainstay of my diet, and I would not go without a vegetable juice, um, you know, any day of the year, basically. <laughs> you know, it's that important to me. So this one runs at a low and slow 40 RPMs. Uh, three year warranty. Another reason why you might want to get this machine is if you are off the grid, right? This machine pulls 1200 watts of power, uses a lot of power consumption. So your electricity bill will hardly be any, maybe a few pennies higher because electricity is not as expensive. But this one's 200 watts. So if you're more eco friendly, e eco conscious, this uses six times less power <laughs> to juice, you know, than that machine. The other thing I want to say is that this machine is plastic on here. So it's like a silver plastic. This actually is a stainless steel uh, finish on the bottom of this machine which is really nice all right so taking out how this machine works it's a slow juicer unlike this machine that runs at high speed this has a smaller feed chute and then what what happens on this machine is that there is an auger a slow running auger that runs at 40 rpm this auger is spinning around and turning and as you put the produce in it's chunked off it's crushed and ground up and squeezed and the juice then is a slowly uh, comes out these holes in the juicing screen and the pulp, and which then falls out this little um, spout here that has a little nice, easy, um, you know, drip spout here. So you stop drips by doing this instead of having to turn it, so that's more convenient. And the pulp comes out slowly out this spout here, and this is the main uh, juicing body in there. I like this machine because it actually has a wide port, 
where the uh, pulp comes out, so this is least, less likely to clog than other vertical juicers. That being said, if you do get a vertical juicer, you do need to pay attention and use it properly. I'll post a link down below to my video. Juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer, which would include pre-cutting select items like celery, uh, ginger, and um, leafy greens, um, it's not baby greens, to ensure that the juicer does not clog up on you, as well as rotate your ingredients as you're putting them in. The next thing I want to do is a sound test, because I know some of you guys are sound sensitive, so we've got a decibel meter here. We're just going to hold this up, and uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this machine on the high speed. Alright, so right next to the machine, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but it was basically reading like 79, and then when I'm talking it's like 90, because I'm kind of loud. Next, let's go ahead and turn on the shine juicer and see how loud this guy is. So it's fluctuating between 68, uh, 66 to 68 right around there so that is significantly quieter than this machine you know uh, people in the past have described to me that a high-speed juicer sounds like an airplane taking off in their kitchen and why is this important well I know some of you guys like my ex-girlfriend was actually sound sensitive so anytime I'm loud you're like ah um, but more importantly you know some of you guys want to juice in the morning when your roommates or family are asleep and this one will, will likely wake them up whereas you could probably do this you know without waking up you know, your neighbors or your family in the morning so that you guys can drink your fresh juice and not be inconvenienced by the noisiness of a high-speed juicer. Um, other than that, I think, you know, the main things about these machines are that it's a slow and high-speed machine. I'm a big fan of the slow machines, not of the high-speed machines. I started out with a high-speed machine, but if I knew now what, what I thought I, I didn't know then, I would have totally just went for a slow juicer at that point. That being said, when I got in involved with juicing, we didn't have all these cool vertical slow juicers that we have today. I like the vertical style slow juicer the most because they're the most versatile if you want to juice a wide variety of things without focusing on any specific kind of fruit or vegetable. Now, if you do want to focus on a specific kind of fruit or vegetable, please check my other videos because I have juicers, a juicer for every different kind of produce item and trust me I've juiced more different kinds of produce items <laughs> than most people on the planet in my personal opinion okay so the next thing I want to do we're gonna go ahead and get into a raw comparison we're gonna juice even amounts of produce in both machines so first we're gonna come back and do a weigh-in to make sure we have a fair fight alright so now we're all ready and set up to juice in both juicers the first step is to make sure we have a fair fight and we're gonna go ahead and do a weigh-in of the organic cucumbers organic apples organic ginger organic lime and pineapple so there is all the produce and let's go ahead over on the shine side looks like we got 1360 on the scale over on the power XL juicer side once again looks like we got 1360 on the scale as well and we'll go ahead and get a shot of both scales so you guys can see clearly that it's 1360 on both scales so now that you guys saw we have a fair way in let's go ahead and move these scales off to the side here and let's get juicing so the other thing I love to do in my comparisons is always uh, do a time test so you guys can see how long it takes to juice the uh, same exact items um, in each juicer so today we'll be juicing in the power XL juicer first I'll be using speed 2 since these are like some fruits and whatnot we're gonna go hit and start and we're gonna go ahead and juice in the juicer now we will need to use the pusher which actually has a unique kind of gripper design which I haven't seen before and then at the end of course we're gonna try to do that self cleaning function um, uh, because some of these items are larger than the feed chute we will have to pre-cut them so that'll be taken up you know in the time because I'll also be doing that with a shine so in any case let's go ahead and hit the start button here and let's go ahead and turn it on speed 2 and let's get juicing Oh, jeez. 
kidding me? got done juicing in the um, Power XL juicer. You can see it took basically about a minute uh, to juice, not quite as fast as a bro because the feed juice not as big and when I put the lime in it really made a clunky sound and this is the juice we got. Uh, next let's go ahead and juice in the shine juicer. Um, probably gonna, it will take longer for sure but it'll be interesting to see if we actually make more yield or what exactly happens because I never know what's gonna happen alright so uh, Let's go ahead and hit the reset here. Let's hit the start button. Let's turn this machine on, and now we will have to pre-cut some of the items here. Um, I always encourage you guys to rotate the different consistencies as you put it into the juicer for the best results. So we put a cucumber in there. Now we're going to go ahead and put um, some pineapple in there. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and rotate through the ingredients, and we're going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys to save you guys a little bit of time. Alright, so we're just about done juicing in the shine juicer, so the slow process is taking almost four times as long. We're almost at four minutes. Uh, we got the last piece of pineapple going in the machine. Most important thing when you're juicing in a slow juicer is take your time. You try to start using the pusher and cramming things in there faster to make it go faster. You know, you could put excess stress on the screen, you could cause screen breakage. And also that's going to cause your yield to go down because you're trying to get things through the juicer faster than it can accept it. One of the things I love about the slow juicer is I can just worry about cutting things up and I can drop it in and it's going to juice it at its own pace so I don't have to sit there and use the pusher, you know, to get the juice out. And once you put that final produce item in the machine, you want to let it run a little bit longer until the pulp stops flowing out of the machine, which it looks like. One of the tips I like to use also is just we'll hit it reverse for a second and then hit it back to forward and see if we get any more juice out. It looks like we're pretty much done, so we'll go ahead and hit stop. So that took uh, 4 minutes and 38 seconds, so that's like what, it took like uh, three and a half minutes longer, and so for the extra three and a half minutes that you invested in your health, is it worth it? Well, let's find out when we do this comparison to see how much juice each juicer made right now. So the first step is always on the juicers, I like to tip them up, so on the shine we're tipping it up to get all the drips out. Over on the Power XL, we'll tip this guy up, see if there's any juice left over. And yes, of course, there is some juice left over. And then we're going to go ahead and turn this spout cap up. <laughs> let's see, that's a little bit difficult to turn up here. And let, next, let's go ahead and put these juices up front and center and do a close-up on the yields. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the juices over on the Power XL side. This is really hard to read because, I mean, there's definitely separation. And we got up to uh, basically um, almost 500 milliliter, and then it separates really bad into like a foam separation layer. And that layer goes up to, I'd say, a little bit below 900, maybe like 890. And then at the rest, we just basically got straight up foam foam. You guys can see the difference in the foam layers. Um, so I'd say a little bit, maybe 890 was the overall yield, not counting the foam. The foam is basically uh, juice that has air, been aerated. So we want to kind of minimize the foam because that's that's uh, lower nutrition. Also, if you guys denote the color on that juice, it's a lot lighter in color. If we go over to the shine juicer, look at that juice difference. You guys see the difference in that? My camera. It's a lot more deeper green. What does that mean? That means more chlorophyll. That means more nutrition, in my personal opinion. In addition, what we're not seeing is the separation. Not to say that these juicers won't separate. They definitely will not separate as fast or as quickly, but they will separate over time, um, but the high-speed juicers tend to separate more quickly due to the air being injected. The other thing we're not seeing is we're not seeing the strata or the different layers on there. We see one solid color, 
until we get up to like around 800. And then you can see we have a couple of different distinct foam layers. So we have like a memory thick foam layer that I will count as juice up to about uh, right about 900. And then above we have a different foam layer so you guys can see the different distinct foam layers. The top foam layer I believe is foam. The bottom one is just more of a thicker juice that was created at the end. So in the end I would say the uh, Shine made about 900 and the Power XL made about you know 890 although you could almost say that both these made the same amount of juice so yes even if you're gonna say these made the same amount of juice which I could go with I'll go with that I'll say these are a tie technically but if you look at the quality of the juice that is what surely is different in this test is this the separation the color the aeration the loss of nutrients and this looks a lot more clean and vibrant something that you might want to drink whereas this to me looks more like a the color of my pee when I'm not feeling that good. All right, so the next thing I want to do, I want to go ahead and taste test the juices for you guys. So first we'll taste the high speed juice, and I want you guys to notice when I'm pouring this off, you guys can see there's like lots of foam coming out, and we're getting like a lot of froth on there um, when we poured it off, so this is mostly going to be a foamy, frothy juice. Oh my gosh. You guys ever drink the head of a beer? It's been a while since I had head on the beer, but this tastes like the beer head, seriously. Solid aeration, although I will say, that's a good recipe. <laughs> this is all basically foam bubbles. Let's go ahead and try to pour off the shine juice. We have a lot more juice. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of foam. I'm not going to say there's no foam. All juices will produce some level of foam unless you use a vacuum blender to make your juice. Well, then there's still very little foam. So we're going to go ahead and try this juice next. Wow, oh my gosh, that's pretty different. So I'm really tasting the lime a lot more in this juice as well as the ginger, where it's just juice, it was like more muted. Um, you know, uh, the slow juicer is much more effective at grinding up and extracting out nutrients um, from the produce, in my opinion, besides just the water that's coming out through the juicing stream, do the juicing process. This has also been shown in science. So between the taste test of these two juices, I would definitely have to say the Shine Juicer wins by a long shot. Unless you like more watered down juices, you know, or ones that are more foamy, in my personal opinion. All my recipes that I make are always just like whatever I have on hand, <laughs> and that's what we got today. Next, I have two empty plates. I'm going to magically make some vegetables appear. No. <laughs> I want to show you guys the pulp residue, right? So this is the pulp residue and the shine juicer. We're going to dump that out, and so you guys can see. I'm not going to claim it's fully dry, because it's not fully dry. There is some, some wetness in there. If you wanted, you could actually take this pulp and feed it back through the juicer. It'll wring a little bit more out. Next, over on the Power XL, you can see all the pulp that's like sitting in here. And so we're going to scrape some of this out, because I want to show you guys what it looks like. So in addition to the pulp that was inside the machine, we got a whole pulp bin, and we're going to dump this pulp bin out too. And that's what we got inside there. Let's go ahead and reassemble this juicer back. It's a fair bit messy. But it's self-cleaning, so we're going to see how that works in a second. Now I want you guys to compare the differences. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science to see that there's a major difference between these pulps. I mean, number one, if we start going through this pulp, you know, <laughs> that lime, this lime looks like it was reamed out on a reamer. The middle is pretty much empty, but you got the whole rind. This did not even get juice. That means you are missing some of the antioxidants, the vitamin C, the hesperidin, the rutin, the bioflavonoids in this white rind that has basically completely been ground up and put into the pulp there. In addition, if we look through this pulp, you can see, I mean, here's whole pieces of Apple skins that went through the uh, Power XL. This will happen on all high-speed machines where it'll, it'll spit out whole chunks of produce, but they're not going to tell this on the infomercial, whereas, you know, on the Shine Juicer, look, that um, the, the peel was basically fragmented into little pieces. Now, it's not micro granules or anything like that, but, you know, it's a lot smaller. And what people don't tell you is that actually a lot of the nutrition and anti-cancer benefit are actually found in the skin of the apples. And when you're not getting them ground up, 
the juice cannot come out of them, the nutrients cannot be released into your juice. In addition, we could go, look, we got a whole slice of the cucumber. You could use this stuff on your salad if you wanted. Off, on this side, I mean, you're not going to find any piece of the cucumber. This is designed so that it grinds up things. I mean, we're going to find, you know, wet pieces, which is basically what was the cucumber, which is still a bit wet, um, but we're not going to find whole chunks. Let's see, I want to find some of that ginger in there. Oh, wait, is this the ginger here? Or is that the pineapple? It's a piece of the pineapple core that didn't go through. But anyways, the point of the matter is that if you go through this pulp, which actually in many cases is finely ground up, I mean, it's pretty fine. It's more of a liquid consist. It's like more of a ground down consistency to a, to a finer consistency than maybe the shine, which is a little more coarse. Of course, both these can be pressed out further to get a greater extraction. But in general, you'll see larger pieces left on high speed machines. Although, I will have to say this machine is fairly efficient for a high speed machine, although the pulp is really quite wet. Not something I'm a big fan of. I'll be pressing the pulp out of both these machines in a $2,300 press to get all my juice out so don't waste any. All right, Every juicer will leave some wetness in the pulp unless you get a $2,300 juicer that'll get it sawdust dry literally. All right. The next step is we want to see how the self-cleaning function works on the um, Power XL because that's its claim to fame. <laughs> You know, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a basically a collection cup underneath. We're going to turn this spout down. A little bit harder, difficult to turn for me, actually. Then the next step is we've got, we got a little pitcher of water here. And uh, this is interesting. I guess we're supposed to pour this water in while we're pressing this button, the cleaning, you know, brush thing that I showed you guys earlier up and down. So first step is we're going to go ahead and put it on clean. It runs at a slow speed, probably the slowest setting. We're going to go ahead and put water in there and push this up and down. You know what we're doing here is basically we're um, squeezing off the screen, but as we do this, I don't know if you guys can see that, I don't have a good slow-mo, but there's like literally water splashing up like a fountain out of the top, so I'm not going to say this is the cleanest thing to do in the world. Maybe you're supposed to put water in and then close that lid so you don't get splashes, but who's going to do that realistically, right? And look, I don't know, you guys see it? Like It looks like the dancing fountain at Disney World. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Alright, so there's all the water. And it sounds like it's really grinding the screen when I'm hitting that on there. So let's go ahead and turn that off. I showed you guys what it looked like when we took it apart at the end. And you know, there's still a lot of pulp in there. Let's see if this really self-cleaned or not. Close that little top, pull that down, and let's take a look. Inside here, does that look clean to you guys? It looks like there's still a lot of pulp in there, and then I'm going to have to clean it manually myself, and this did not automatically self-clean as it's portrayed. It makes a good tagline, but in reality, man, I still got to clean that stuff. So now this is just an extra kind of step. You know, the next thing is, let's go ahead and see how it cleaned the screen. Did it clean the screen off effectively? so that I don't have to use that cleaning brush and actually this is a little bit hard to take off there so here's the, the, the screen while it did remove some of the pulp out of the screen I don't know if you guys can see the back of the screen there are little fibrous hairs this is likely from the ginger or the pineapple that are stuck in the screen and by merely brushing off the screen with like a, a squeegee it's not going to get the ground and stuff off of it so I will say that this is a self cleaning fail in my personal opinion Although some of you guys might not clean things well, and to you this might be clean, to me this still requires you know, significant scrubbing with the included brush or other cleaning brush. In addition, if we take this out, I don't know how you're going to clean all this stuff underneath the rim of the uh, juicing screen by just simply pouring water in it so it self-cleans. So, you know, I'd say that it's self-cleaning is a stretch. Um, you know, this still will require a solid cleaning in my book. So at the end of this episode, what did we learn? Is the Power XL that great juicer that you've seen on that infomercial or in advertising online? You know, I'd say, hey, it's a juicer and it works, and some juicer is better than no juicer, so you can get the fresh fruit and vegetable juices in you. That being said, I have found some deficiencies personally, such as it's not fully self-cleaning as I would believe it to be when you read self-cleaning, number one. Number two, it's also a high-speed juicer that basically will separate out your juice like this, leave a lots of foam, and not extract all the nutrients 
you know, that are in like things like rinds that in this case basically came out whole without getting juiced. This is not a surprise, but I kind of knew that this was going to happen because I've tested other high-speed machines because this is basically just another high-speed machine. Whether you get this brand, a Breville, or another different high-speed model that has a self-cleaning option because it is available on a few other high-speed machines. They all work in the same manner at this time from what I am aware. Um, you know, I would much rather go with a slow juicer. You know, the Shine Juicer is an excellent entry-level model for those of you guys that aren't super serious about doing this for the rest of your life. If you guys are serious about juicing for the rest of your life, I'd recommend getting a higher end model that has even a 15 year warranty, 10 to 15 year warranty. Be sure to check my other YouTube, be sure to check my YouTube channel for videos on high end juicers. But the slow juicers, they don't separate your juice. They make a much richer, deeper, darker, more nutritious juice, in my opinion, uh, in terms of the polyphenols and antioxidant compounds that are easily oxidized when the machine is running at up to 25,000 RPMs. So at the end of this episode, although the yield maybe was a tie, I'm going to give this to the Shine Juicer, made a higher quality juice. It's going to be, you know, you still got to clean it, but there's a lot less parts and a lot less, uh, you know, parts and screen to clean on here. You know, a lot less screen area than all these things coming out the back. And you got the auger there, super simple, super easy to clean. Wipe that down. All my pulp gets composted. Um, to get clean and then inside this little bowl here. I mean, it's basically almost cleaned itself <clears throat> So uh, I got to clean both these guys up if you guys are looking for a juicer I would recommend you guys purchase the shine juicer instead of the power XL link is down below first comment in The comment section also in the description also if you like this video Hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also please be sure to share this video with somebody else that may be considering the Power XL juicer so they, they could learn the truth and the differences between these two different machines and why the only reason why you'd want to get the Power XL is if you won't juice any other way. Once again, it only took three and a half more minutes to juice in this machine. So is your health worth three and a half minutes to be done three and a half minutes later? The cleaning time I would estimate approximately the same time because there's a lot of surface area on this and the, you know, the juice catch container has a nice deep pockets in there. And, I mean, this container is basically almost clean as it is, all right? Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you never miss out on my new upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Um, make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all the different major brand juicers vacuum blenders, and other appliances that allow you to get more fresh fruits and vegetables in you so you can be healthy. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I want to encourage you guys to support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This directly powers my lights, you know, allows me to buy SD cards for my video camera, and allows me to continue to make these juice off videos to teach you guys and share with you guys the truth about juicing. So your support is much appreciated. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.